breathing, something we all tend to take for granted. But in the workplace, with the possibility of having to breathe in a contaminated atmosphere, it's vital to understand when and how to use a respirator. They are designed to ensure the air you breathe is safe. The composition of clean air is 78% nitrogen, 21% oxygen, and 1% of other gases. In a contaminated or oxygen deficient atmosphere, a change in balance can affect the lungs' ability to transfer the oxygen and carbon dioxide to and from the bloodstream. Quite simply, if you don't get enough oxygen or you inhale highly toxic air, you die. The effects of breathing in workplace contaminants can be either of an acute nature, having a devastating immediate result, or can be chronic, producing illness and disease over a medium to long term. I have taken training since, but you never know because it takes 20 years or better to for it to show up. Contaminants in the workplace atmosphere can vary from asbestos fibers to toxic solvents and fumigants in the form of dust, mist and fumes to non-solids such as gases and vapors. Dusts are solid particles suspended in the air after grinding, sanding, or cutting. Dusts can also be stirred up by sweeping. Mists are tiny liquid droplets suspended in the air, as might happen when spray painting or aerating liquids. Fumes are fine particles that drift into the air when metals are heated, vaporized, and cooled, perhaps by welding, soldering, or grinding. Chromium and nickel fumes produced while welding stainless steel may lead to cancer. Gases are substances that are airborne at room temperature. And vapors are substances that evaporate from a liquid or solid at room temperature. Paint thinners, solvents, and gasoline vapors can damage internal organs like the heart and brain. Vapors and gases may be invisible hazards that go unnoticed, colorless, tasteless, and odorless, like carbon monoxide, they may travel great distances in the workplace. You have to constantly be aware of the possibility of invisible respiratory hazards. Breathing in contaminants can coat your lungs and prevent your blood from picking up oxygen. Your nose, throat and lungs are literally being clogged up by these particles or contaminants can pass directly into your bloodstream and internal organs, resulting in potential illness. A respirator is a proactive device to make the air we breathe healthy and safe. In order to protect yourself, know what hazards you are facing. Determine the type, nature, and concentration of the contaminants in the workplace atmosphere. A hazard assessment will aid in determining the type of respiratory protection required. The selection of the appropriate respirator is governed by five key factors. What is the contaminant or contaminants we are dealing with? What is the concentration level? What is the oxygen level? Any workplace atmosphere with low to no oxygen, rated as IDLH, immediately dangerous to life and or health, must be treated with the utmost caution and constantly monitored. What are the warning properties? And is there enough ventilation and circulation? Your employer will ensure atmospheric testing is performed when required to determine the concentration of airborne contaminants. Publish data, MSDS, and container label WIMIS information will dictate the respiratory protection required based on concentration and duration of exposure. Warning properties must be identified. Some contaminants have no warning properties. Watch for the potential of airborne oil. 
Oil lubricated air compressors and the presence of motor vehicles can often be the source. You may require a special cartridge filter. Workplace atmosphere conditions may change. Regularly assess to make certain that the proper respirator is being used. There are administrative and engineering decisions your employer may use to control airborne contaminants on the work site. Is there a way to eliminate the job task altogether? Is a fan for ventilation enough? Can work on an item be performed somewhere less hazardous and then transported back to the site? Should other work personnel be kept away from the site? Can a dangerous process involving airborne contaminants be isolated or contained? But in many cases, there is no choice other than to use personal protective equipment. Breathing is life. Your lungs must be protected. Your respiratory system keeps you alive. Use a respirator. Before choosing a respirator, some basic health issues have to be addressed. If there are pre-existing physical limitations, breathing or medical conditions, a worker may not be allowed to use respiratory protection. A respirator health screening form or similar documentation must be completed for each worker. If a worker has bronchitis or a recent case of pneumonia, they are required to tell their supervisor. Everyone has to be certain that the worker is healthy enough to use a respirator. There is a wide variety of respiratory protection available. There are two main categories, air purifying respirators, APRs, and supplied air breathing apparatus, SABAs, which includes self-contained breathing apparatus, or SCBAs. An air purifying respirator draws air through a filter cartridge or canister to remove specific air contaminants. Air purifying respirators range from disposable dust and particulate mask for protection from dust and mist to half mask and full face piece reusable respirators for protection from heavier concentrations of air contaminants. Supplied air breathing apparatus, SABAs, including self-contained breathing apparatus, SCBAs, are used in atmospheres that are unknown, oxygen deficient, or highly toxic. APRs and SABAs should only be used by people who have been trained. We will be dealing with fit testing and the use of APRs and SABAs in other modules. A respirator that does not fit properly can be more dangerous than no respirator at all. It can lead to a false sense of security and can be fatal. <sighs> Maintenance of your respirator is an ongoing process. Check your air purifying respirator each time before you use it. Look for splits, cuts, cracks, stiffening, scratches, tears, or holes in the body of the mask. Check for broken, torn, or damaged head straps and buckles. Also, look for loss of strap elasticity. Damaged face pieces should be replaced. Check the exhalation and inhalation rubber valves to see if they are free of tears and cuts and not brittle to the touch. Check a full face respirator face window for distortion, dirt, dust, and detergent residue. Tell your supervisor of any damage. Check filtering components to see that the correct filters are being used. The filters have not passed their use-by date or service life. The filters are clearly labeled. There is no damage to the filter assembly and that the filters are correctly seated in the filter housing. Only use those filters and cartridges that are manufactured for that particular respirator. When removing a respirator, tilt your head forward to minimize the possibility of contaminated material caught in the upper ridge of your shield from falling into your face. You can sanitize your respirator by using appropriate wipes or the manufacturer's recommended disinfectant. Clean and disinfect 
daily. Wash in mild soap and warm water. Hot water, household cleaners, or solvents may damage rubber parts and the face piece. Rinse thoroughly in clean, warm water because detergents or cleaners that dry on the face piece may later cause skin irritation. Hand dry with a clean, lint-free cloth or air dry. Don't dry by artificial heating. It may change the shape of the mask, resulting in a poor face seal. Store your respirator in a plastic bag or container and place it in a safe place, like up on a shelf, in a locker, or carefully in a job box. Don't bury it away in a toolbox. It may get pressed out of shape. To rely on your respirator, you must maintain it properly. One day, it just may save your life. Use your respirator correctly and treat it with respect. <laughs>